So what's going on? I wanted to talk about what happened last night uh, over in California. You had Virgil Ortiz uh, getting the uh, stoppage win over Samuel Vargas. Uh, he stays undefeated. He is, you know, uh, there at, what is that, 16 and 0, right? Uh, you know, 16 and 0, 16 knockouts or whatnot. And uh, gets, you know, that win over Samuel Vargas uh, there. And, you know, landed a good amount of power shots uh, there against Samuel Vargas to uh, get the win. Um, and he's, you know, kind of being pushed as a guy that is a, a future contender for a world title there in the uh, welterweight division, um, you know. Uh, he did uh, have uh, call-outs to uh, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman after the fight. Um, not sure how those fights would be able to uh, take place, given that, you know, uh, Ortiz is uh, basically affiliated with Golden Boy Promotions, and Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia are affiliated with uh, Premier Boxing Champions. Um, so there's, you know, I would say a slim chance of that uh, happening. Uh, but in reference to Virgil Ortiz, as far as like him being a contender for a world title, I don't know. Um, really not uh, all too sure about that uh, for Virgil Ortiz. I mean, yes, he's 16 and 0. Uh, yes, he you know does have uh, 16 knockouts. Uh, but uh, it's it's kind of like up in the air as far as like you know um, how we would do against the uh, top guys there in the welterweight division. Um, he did, you know, mention, like I said, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. You have the world champions, uh, Errol Spence Jr., Manny Pacquiao, and Terrence Crawford. Um, you know, and that's it's very interesting that he did call out those two guys but didn't call out uh, Sean Porter, uh, who was also a former world champion, um, you know, or the likes of your Dennis Ugas or... Um, you know, a few other guys there that are floating around the uh, welterweight division. But, um, you know, he's, you know, had a string of good wins, good stoppage wins against the likes of Mauricio Herrera, Antonio Orozco, uh, and Brad Solomon before uh, defeating Samuel Vargas. Uh, but um, as far as like him being a, a world title contender real soon, I'm not sure about that. Uh you know, I think that he needs to be put in position to fight one of those you know, other top guys there uh, in the welterweight division. You know, um, I, I think that there, you know, with it being the welterweight division, there is a lot of guys uh, that could be, you know, considered uh, as uh, top contenders uh, right there. Um, but, you know, with him getting this win over, you know, uh, you know, Vargas, uh, but, you know, it, it's kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, quandary as far as like where he would be positioned at. Um, you have, you know, other guys out there, Sergey Lipinets, who's going to be in a fight. Um, you have David Amnesian also there. You have Omar Figueroa that's also out there. Uh, Jesse Vargas is out there as well. Mikey Garcia is out there in the welterweight division. So it's a lot of guys uh, that's there currently in front of, uh, you know, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Um, so uh, for him to be, you know, confident enough to challenge the likes of a Danny Garcia or Keith Thurman um, shows how much confidence that he does have. But I'm not too sure about his overall chances against the likes of those guys. Me personally, I wasn't all too... Um, impressed with uh what he had there um against Samuel Vargas um I think there was a lot of instances where um if he was fighting somebody with a little bit more speed he would have been countered um a few times so I mean that's what I got in reference to you know our uh, virtual Ortiz is when uh you can tell us what you think subscribe to the boxing source here on YouTube and I will catch y'all later peace